The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the February 27th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us. Not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Would love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, you can always send me an email. Send that off to steve at tfn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We begin our day with a mixed bag. The mix coming from the Dow and S&P. Uh, S&P is down just slightly. The Dow's off 138 points, about three-tenths removed. Trainees are off four points. That's basically flat. Then NASDAQ 100 up 20. Russell's up 24. Semis are up 23. Gold's up four bucks. Silver's off two cents. Like recruit is down a buck. Natural gas is basically flat. And the 30-year treasury print out at 118.25. Now our leaders in the clubhouse to the upside auto zone. $162 move, 6%. Big move there. 7% for MicroStrategy or 56. Viking Therapeutics, 34. 90%, 190 for Janix Therapeutics, Sterling Infrastructure, 20 bucks, a 23-point move. We got some movers. We've also got some shakers. SBA Communications down 4%, $8 in change. Adobe, $8 in change, or nearly 2%. Booking Holding, 6 bucks. That's basically flat. Amgen down 6, 2 and 3 tenths percent. Berkshire off 6, nearly uh, 1 and 7 tenths percent. Service now down 6, less than 1% to the downside. So we got movers. We got shakers. What else do we got out here? We got price. Let's go take a look at our daily equity future contracts. Let's stay on the black background charts what do we know we know there's no top on the daily time frame but bearish reversal candle would generate a rose momentum indicator top price above the top of its profile therefore conditions are bullish top of that profile 50 52 if price were to pull back close below it we've got something else happening the same thing with regard to the nq except the price point to watch there is 17924 no topping pattern is in place as we speak um if we take a look at the dow equity future contract no topping pattern here in the equity future contract price right now pulling back and testing support the low so far of the day is down at the 38,935. 38,460, I'm sorry, 38,920 is the top of that daily profile. So support holding there. The Russell 2000 is the uh, strongest of the uh, four. Now that's targeting the uh, top, or it's descending trend line. So that first target around 2065, I believe, 2064, five, six, seven, somewhere around there. So you got the uh, Russell 2000. Another 10 points before it hits that resistance level out there. So it'll be interesting to watch how the rest of the market, does the NQ start turning down? Does that turn down the other three equity future contracts? I don't know the answer to that. Just something I'm questioning or wondering inside my mind out here. Quick peek at Apogee. That came in over the weekend on Saturday. You do have the ES Mini trading below it. That's at 50.95. So that's a slightly bearish signal. The opposite, in the case of the NQ, short term, it's a slightly bearish signal. Short term in the NQ, it's slightly bullish 
uh, signal because prices trade above its apogee pivot point at 17.961. Gold below its, silver below its, lights recruit above its. That's a bullish thing. And the uh, U.S. dollar index actually trading below apogee at 103.89. So that'd be a level just simply to be watching. All right, so let's do this here. Let's uh, go ahead. And uh, there were a couple instruments that came in yesterday towards the end of the show. I didn't get to them. Let's begin with those. Let's can, there's a number of instruments that have come in. I don't want to get behind, but we're just going to surf around and see what we can figure out. With regard to yesterday, there was a question that came in from Dan in New York City. It came in so late, I just didn't have time to really take a look at it. It was with regard to uh, PPLT, the ETF for platinum. I had mentioned, hey, let's take a look at platinum itself uh, and see what its signals are. Now, I did try to look up PPLT, Dan. I did try to find out what its holdings are, and I don't have a clue. But I've got to assume that it is the current contract for Platinum, which is a July. I don't have that up on my screen. I have the continuous. And the reason I have the continuous up is if I put the uh, April, did I say July? If I put the April contract up on my screen right now, we won't get any data, enough data to get any kind of Stevie technical patterns on the weekly and the monthly. I did check, and by the way, the profile levels are the same when I use a continuous contract here for the daily time frame. So what do we know about the daily time frame? We take a look at the underlying instrument. I assume it is April. You don't see the screen? Son of a gun. Sorry about that, and thank you, Mr. Bill. That's how I test to see if anybody's paying attention, Mr. Bill. Just kidding. Uh, okay, so now we got those screens up for platinum. Uh, so what we know about platinum out here for the April contract for platinum is that uh, price is consolidating with inside its uh, uh, profile level. This generated a buy the I'm sorry, Rhodes momentum indicator bottom back on February the uh, 12th out there. So you just got a good old fashioned consolidation. Yesterday, price got back towards the bottom at consolidation at 879.40. On a weekly time frame chart, not much here to assist us. We're below profile, below red oscillator and change line. That says if we get a close below the day of the, uh, February 9th, that would be 873.30. We're headed lower out there. Now that lower could just be 852.50, which is the bottom of its monthly profile. So you're consolidating the monthly and the daily time frame out here. So just a consolidation. We now have a much clearer message, Dan, than we did when we took a look at PPLT. Here are the PPLT charts out there. Doesn't show that same wide consolidation on the daily of PPLT like it does on the actual underlying instrument out there. So if you trade PPLT, my best recommendation for you is get access to the futures contract. You don't have to trade the futures contract, but if you're looking for signals as to what it's communicating to you, look at the underlying instrument out here. So that's uh, that's really what I would do. I wouldn't really spend a whole lot of time on this PPL PPLT chart unless we find out that there's multiple uh, contracts, multiple uh, platinum contracts inside this thing. If you could go figure that out, help me out there. Maybe we could even do a better review of it. So that's what I see when I take a look at platinum. Thanks for waking an extra day on that. Um, Dan, uh, yesterday, towards the end of the show, wanted to take a look at Blink. BLNK is the uh, ticker symbol out here. Right now, BLNK is trading at about $3.14. It's trading with inside its profile. And we take a look at Blink charging. What do we have out here? You know, I don't see a whole lot on the daily other than just a consolidation with inside his profile. It's um, it's traded above that green oscillator and change line. That profile, the daily time frame, Dan, is slightly bearish. 328 to 362 is the sell zone on the daily time frame. We come back from this break. Let's take a look at Blink charging for its weekly time frame, its monthly time frame, see if we can figure anything out. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. So we're taking a look at the stock charts here for uh, Blink Charging, um, consolidation with inside the daily profile, sell zone between 328 362. You're trading with inside this profile in the weekly time frame, Dan. 241 is the support, 379 is resistance. You have a wave number seven bottom that uh, looks like it will take hold. Um, so on the monthly time frame, you do have a bottom. That suggests a move up towards its oscillator and change line. The oscillator and change line right now is at the $4.46 area out here. But before you can get there, you've got to deal with resistance like 328, 362, 379, 386 before it would get up and 496. So those would be your battleground levels based upon the current profiles for the daily, weekly, and the monthly time frame. So that's what I see, Dano. Hope that helps out. By the way, you do have a nice road momentum indicator bottom on the weekly time frame. So you got a monthly and a weekly bottom pattern out there, and that should bode well for you. So thanks for your question. Thanks for waiting an extra day. Hector wants to take a look at Newmont Mining. Now, Hector and Newmont Mining, first I'll put up the charts for Newmont. Let's do this here. And I th we're going to go back and take a look at the uh, black background charts, I believe. But let me see. His question is the monthly. Oh, I don't actually, we don't, probably don't have to do that. So the question, I'm going to expand out the monthly chart. And the question is, you know, the monthly chart, if you compare it to the last move higher, which uh, in this case here, he's looking at the November 23rd swing point out here from just a few months ago. And that, by the way, did volume of 402 million shares last month. When this thing was pulling back, it was 211, so pulling back with light volume. This month, we closed pretty soon, we're about 235. His question is, hey, this is pulling back with light volume. Isn't that a bullish sign? My answer to that question would be no in this instance. And the instance being, we're trading below that swing point. And as long as we close below that swing point, that's at 33.59. Really, what that's telling us, those buyers that were there, they don't have the strength to come in and support it. They're not willing to support it. So if you close below a swing point, 
I don't care whether it's with light volume or heavy volume. It's with heavy volume, really, he's telling you that it wants to go lower. Light volume, uncertain, but where would it go to next? Where's the next level of support? Hector, uh, 3286 is a TD nine count breakout level. You would have expected, I would have expected, I would have anticipated. Newmont Mine would have at least held that on the uh, monthly time frame. It has not. It is a weak as can be. We take a look at that monthly time frame. But great question. But likely we're going to close below that swing point unless there's some big major things take place in the next couple of days out here. So I'd say it's more of a bearish message. When we look at the weekly time frame chart, you can see that road's been indicator signal. Uh, that needs a bullish reversal candle. We're in week number eight of a TD9 count. That says you could be getting close to a bottom, TD9 count bottom that could form between this week and the next two. If that's going to unfold, then what we'll see on the daily time frame, Hector and Patty, is we'll also see a bullish reversal candle to confirm a road's momentum indicator bottom. If we get that out of Newmont, then regardless of what the monthly chart is telling us, we get a bottom out of the daily and the weekly, then I think we've got a bottom. But uh, great question. Thanks for bringing it up. There's a lot of chatter, you know, there was when I just turned in. I can't see if there's a lot of chatter. Just what, what I saw on my screen, just discussions about mining stocks. So I said, hey, since there's all that chatter, why don't we go take a look at the mining stocks? I think what, what uh, the analysis was trying to figure out which stocks are the strongest. So I can share with you which stocks are the strongest utilizing the tools that I use, which are maybe different tools than what others use. But at least you can go ahead and take this into consideration. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change screens out here because we're on basically the last leg of the uh, mining stocks out there that I would track from a weighting standpoint. Uh, so we are on which screen? God, I wish I could tell. Oh, Newmont Mine. There we go. Okay, so just to make sure. Yeah, I got Newmont Mining. Okay, so this is, at least as of a couple of days ago, this is the top eight weightings with inside of the GDX. But if we take a look at Newmont Mining, we already covered that. You can just see on the daily base that road's meant to indicator signal. Weak, we know in order to show any kind of strength, it needs to form a bottom pattern. Gold, I would say, on Stevie's charts, is a strong mining stock. Why? It has a TD9 count bottom pattern that formed um, probably a week and a half ago or so. So formed on the trading day of February the 14th. Right now you have a consolidation with inside his profile. So for those of you that have a hankering to own a mining stock, I would say the number two weighted stock inside the GDX looks bullish. It's got a bottom, bottom signal with a consolidation. AEM. Ran into resistance at that. It's got a TD9 count bottom as well. Ran into resistance up at that breakdown level of support in 1958. That's fairly strong, too. It's still trading above profile levels. You just know strong battle at 49.58. Franco Nevada has been in a sideways consolidation. Let's see for how long this has been going on. Quite a while out here. So I'd say the mining stocks don't get moving until this guy gets moving. Right now, we're towards the bottom of that consolidation. We're testing this TD9 count bottom for back in December. That had volume of 1.26 million shares last week we came down with 567 so far for the first day and a half 136 so no idea what that's going to equate to come friday out there so that's franco nevada if you take a look at uh, wpm no bottom signal there that stevie sees we're trading on gfi gold fields we're trading into a td9 count bottom the swing had volume of 6.2 million shares yesterday this did 3.3 so this has got this is kind of an interesting one to take a look at would be gold fields because we're testing this swing point. Have we tested and rejected that swing point? That's the question. So let's go find out. So it was a TD9 count bottom. Yeah, we did. So this tested and rejected that swing point yesterday on lighter volume. This should rally up to 1310. So I would say GFI is a it's got at least a bottoming pattern to the extent that you would want to trade that. If I take a look at AU, Anglo Ashante. Looks relatively bullish because price above profiles as well as its daily oscillator and change line. Trading up into a TD9 count top, though. That uh, swing point that it's trading into did volume of 2.9 million. Yesterday, you pulled up into it with 2.5. So not too shabby out there, but you are trading into resistance. That resistance is going to be that high at 1886. If we take a look at Rand Gold, RGLD, it's got a Rhodes Mintum Indicator bottom. Now, it hasn't been able to get any traction out here. We can see that oscillator and change line is acting as a key resistance level. So if you see RGLD close above its red oscillator and change line, currently printed at 106.14, that would be a bullish signal. So of these eight stocks out here, the ones that Stevie's signals show strength, GOLD, I'd put that probably, GOLD and GFI at the top of the list out there. Then I'd probably look at AEM, 
and uh, RGLD. Now, those were the uh, top eight weighted stocks. We can change screens. Let's go to the next eight weighted stocks out here. I said we'd look at the uh, go through these mining stocks. So let's just do that uh, screen. I got to try to get to the right screen, though. Must be this one. Hey, Mr. Bill or anybody watching in, just make sure that first, yeah, it says AG. Okay, I see that. So in the case of AG, that's got a nice bottoming pattern, roads momentum indicator bottom. It's still with its sell zone between 467 and 473. If AG can close about 473, it's off to the races to the upside. BVN, don't see much there. AUI's got a roads momentum indicator top that formed yesterday. This is suggesting that it wants to pull back. I'd say 561 becomes a target. Each yo, no bottom signal. Sand, it's got a nice TD9 count bottom, but it just hasn't been able to really deal with that red oscillator and change line. So that's your problem. IAG, it looks like it'll confirm a TD9 count top between today and the next two days out here. Uh, nothing with regard to NGD. So that's the top eight. That's probably enough to go through with regard to, uh, these are the top eight weighted mining stocks out there. So I hope that that helped some of the conversation inside the Tiger's Den. We get back to this break. Let's take a look at BBAI. MSTR, CFLT, XBI, IOVA. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Uh, folks, you 
let's uh, let's take a look at BBAI uh, trading out right now at three dollars and fourteen cents. Has had two stellar days yesterday. Price took out the top of its daily profile. Took out a TD nine count and Rhodes Momentum indicator top out here. Now you've got an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. So I'd be watching for a bearish reversal candle out here on BBAI. If you get one of those on a daily time frame, um, if you get one of those on a daily time frame. We're seeing only your home screen again. Well, I thought I changed it. Sorry about that. Thank you, Al. Appreciate that. Let me get those charts out there for BBAI. There we go. Now we got it. So you can see the A to B equals CD. So formed a real nice uh, TD9 count, Rhodes Mentum indicator bottom back in November. Forms the Rhodes Mentum indicator top. Pulls back out here. And now what we've got is the A to B equals CD pattern. So it's above the one-to-one -one price level. We don't need to really um, go ahead and type that in there for any reason. You'd be watching for a bearish reversal candle to confirm a sell the D point pattern. On a weekly time frame chart, looks like this is going to take out its TD9 count breakup resistance level at $2.23 out there. That says you take out one level, you go to the next level. The next level I have, Dan. $4.34. So I'd say that's its next target. You were asking, do I have anything at 583? I do not. Once price gets above 434, then the next area that I've got is 1052. You were asking about 1003. So I'm going to go with that 1052 is close enough to your 1003 price target out there. But I don't see anything at this point in time that would uh, come up with that $6 type area. But BBI, it looks very strong daily, weekly, even monthly. You're trading above the top of its profile. So congrats to you on that one. Stay with BBAI. Let's go take a look at ticker symbol MSTR. Who's that, Monster? Uh, micro strategy. Uh, that's uh, having a nice day out here. It's having a nice week. It's having a nice month, I believe. So if we take a look at micro strategy on a monthly basis, looks like it's going to take out a TD9 count breakdown resistance level at 743. It's also taking out a monthly TD9 count top. That bodes well for a further move higher. The weekly time frame, too early in the week to know, uh, Vic, but uh, if you do get a close above the, uh, two weeks ago, the high from two weeks ago, bear shooting star, Rhodes Mintum indicator top, 806.78. If you get a weekly close above that, that is a bullish uh, outcome. And the same thing on the daily time frame. You're trading above profile, you're trading above screen oscillator and change line. Things are just simply outright bullish with regard to MSTR. Um, geez, I didn't write down what your question was. And there are so many emails. Let me see if I can find it here real quickly. Marvin. No, you just said you just put MSTR out here. So, uh, so that's why I've got everything here. Looks pretty bullish, uh, and I hope that that information helped you out. Uh, Duncan Steve inside the Tigers Den wanted to take a look at CFLT. So let's pull those charts up here. See what we can find for Duncan on a daily time frame. Yesterday looks like it may have been a Rhodes Momentum indicator top. I'm sorry, a wave number seven top out there. Wave seven. Uh, it generated a Rhodes Mentum indicator top two days ago when it formed that bearish engulfing candle. So you got two tops out there. Does it make it better than one? No, Duncan. In fact, even though you've got tops, its overall signal is neutral. Neutral, Stevie. You just said it formed a top. I did. And whenever you form a top, all that it really entitles you to do is go back and test support. Well, in this case here, the first level of support is that green oscillator and change line. Currently printed at $33.23. Tested it yesterday, rejected it. Tested it today, and rejected it. That's why it has a neutral signal. The weekly is anything but neutral. It's bullish. Price above a green oscillator and change line. Price is trading above a TD9 count breakdown level. It's trading above all resistance, and that suggests a run towards its swing point out here. That swing point range, that's from the swing point of July 21st, anywhere between 3606 and 41.22 monthly file for CFLT. You're trading into the sell zone, so to speak, a slightly, and I do mean slightly, bearish structured profile. Looks to me like price wants to go target 39.09. We get that confirmation when we get a close above that uh, wave seven top yesterday's high out there, 34.32 out there. So CFLT neutral on the daily, bullish on the weekly, bullish on the monthly time frame chart. Duncan, hope that that helped you out. 
And uh, thanks so much for the request. Mr. Bill, he put in a special request. He wanted to take a look at XBI, if I understood him correctly, utilizing Stevie's multi-set of time frame charts out here. So now we can go from monthly down to a 15-minute. Uh, Mr. Bill, you have to tell me if I got that right or if that was just simply a wrong assumption. Making you know what out of me, but not out of you. If we take a look at the monthly time chart for XBI, it is in bullish mode. It is trading above profile resistance. Longer term, says it wants to get to 141.50. Well, let's see what the weekly, the daily, and other charts have to say. The weekly says, I'm in agreement with that call, Stevie. Why? Because it is taking out its TD9 count top and now setting up an A to B equals CD to the upside. Now, I don't know what that retracement is. We can go check it out on my other charts out there. But no matter what, a close above 94.32 this week is going to be a very bullish outcome. Daily time frame, no topping pattern. Rhodes Mintum indicator signal triggered. That just needs a bearish reversal candidate to confirm a top. But you don't get worried about it. It just means, you know, take an umbrella with you because you could get some rain showers out there. But otherwise, everything looks good. Now we take a look at those other intraday charts. This is really what Mr. Bill was probably after. 195-minute chart looks uber bullish out there. The 130-minute chart is taking out a TD nine count top as we speak. That is extremely bullish. 65-minute says you could get a top within the next few hours because we are in bar number eight as we speak. You've got a wave number seven top that's extending itself on the 30-minute time frame chart. I'd say focus on the 30-minute time frame chart because that wave number seven pattern out there, if you get a lower high on a 30-minute basis, we should see price pull back a bit. I would say that pullback would be to the oscillator change line. The other time frame to watch would be the 65 minute time frame chart we use 65 minutes because it's an equally time framed bar there's 390 minutes of trading each day in the cash markets out there you divide that by 65 you're going to get an equal number of bars that that's that way we're looking at things that are even steven huh that's kind of interesting so that's what i've got when i take a look at xbi mr bill i hope that that helped you out looks pretty bullish when we take a look at those charts so i hope you're in that a G man wanted to take a look at a couple of symbols. The first one is I O V A. So let's pull up and let me uh, close out this set of charts out here. It takes up a lot of resources. And then we'll get over to those I O V A charts as soon as Stevie can find them. Sorry, this is taking a moment here to uh, do. And let's see, where is I O V A? That's not it. I think it's got to be that. That's Harmony. That's the second one that he wants. Now we got it, IOVA. So we take a look at IOVA. You've got a wave number seven potential uh, top out there that's gonna that could form today. You have price trading into a gigantic, uh, a gigantic profile, bearish structured profile, and that sell zone is between 1532 and 1693, 1693 out there. So you may have a top, but things are neutral on the daily time frame as long as price remains above that 1383 level weekly time frame g man looks very good i believe you say you're in this with calls just know that you're dealing with that resistance of the top of that daily profile out there and then yesterday's highest a potential the profile level out there is at 1693 weekly looks very bullish monthly looks very bullish says it wants to move up to 2796 so it's the daily that you've got to deal with out here how about in an intraday chart if we take a look at just simply a 30-minute chart for IOVA, Stevie's got nothing. Rose Mintum indicator top, consolidation with inside its profile. How about the 65-minute chart out there? Let's take a quick peek at that. What do we have here? Rose Mintum indicator top, but it's neutral. Price above the top of that daily profile. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We get back and take a look at Harmony, Palo Alto Networks, XPEV, and anything else that I can get my hands on. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60 minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30 day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Folks, yeah, we took care of IOV. Let's get on to Harmony Gold, HMY. This is for G-Man inside the Tiger's Den. So when we take a look at Harmony, here's what we see when we take a look at a daily time frame chart. A couple different things. The first thing that I see is prices trading below that red oscillator and change line. So G-Man, that tells us we have a falling price oscillator below zero. That's a bearish condition, period. We're trading below profile support. Profile support at 579. That's a bearish condition. So I know with regard to support levels, those two support levels, it's in a bearish position. Well, we can also take a look at a swing point and volume test out here. So there's a swing point from back on January 17th. That swing point had volume of 6.3 million shares. That swing point never really completely got tested, but price pulled back into it, and it pulled back, and that test on February 14th had 3.3 million shares, so a lighter volume. Then price rallies, right? So it tests a swing point, it finally gets out of there, rallies up towards that red oscillator and change line, turns back down, again, bearish position out there. Now what we can see is that a couple days ago, Go. So we had volume of 3.3 million shares. On Friday, that was tested with 4.5 million shares. When you test a swing point with volume, says you're going to get back and test it. Well, what did it do yesterday? It tested it yesterday. The volume yesterday was 2.6 million shares. Again, that swing point has volume of 3.3 million shares. So from a swing point perspective, you've got two rejections now of different you know swing points with lighter volume, but it still hasn't really rallied. So I, I, I it's got the swing point test. But with price trading below profile, below the red oscillator and change line, and if you didn't have those on your system, you know, you're, I, I would say, a little disadvantage versus what I'm able to, you know, look at here. Um, I wouldn't put this out there as one of those top uh, stocks out there. I'd, instead, uh, I don't remember which one. It might have been GOLD or 
Rangold or in that first second segment that we did, we identified what looked like the ones that had the best bottoming signals out there. On a weekly time frame, you've got a Rogeman indicator top with a consolidation with inside his profile levels, 520 at support, 636 is resistance. Monthly time frame chart, I don't have much out here uh, to go on. So that's what I see when I take a look at Harmony G-Man. I hope that that helps you out with regard to that. The next request comes in from Marvin, and Marvin's looking for an entry point into Palo Alto networks p-a-n-w is a ticker symbol out here so what do we see on this baby this thing took one heck of a dive when i say a dive uh this closed out at the price point of 366 on august 2nd and the very next day this closed at 261 that is a haircut now We've had a rally. We've had a bounce. That move to the downside, was that any kind of bottoming pattern or anything? Nothing that I had out there. So I have to call this a counter trend move out here. Marvin, the reason I've got to call it a counter trend move, at least when I take a look at the daily time frame, well, I take that back. There's a new profile that formed, new profile that is formed out here. It still is a counter trend move unless price is able to close above 329.64. But you do have a new profile as well. And so let's take a look at it. So for its daily time frame, the top is at 294.61. We're trading above that. Wow. Okay, so Marvin, the first possible entry point that I would give you on this would be that the top of that profile, 294.61. Old resistance never acted as resistance. Maybe it would act as support on a pullback. So let's leave that as one possible figure. On a weekly time frame chart, what do we have? We have price that's trying to get back inside its profile. If on Friday at the close, this close above 308.39, it actually says its break to the downside was a false breakdown. That's the weekly time frame chart. I don't have that same signal on the daily time frame chart, but that would be the signal on the weekly. That would be confirmed, Marvin, by the monthly time frame chart. Look at it. First, there's no topping signal. Maybe there's an A to B equals CD pattern. Let me pull this back and find out. Yeah, it looks like there is. Let's just let's make sure it's made that at least that 100% move out here. So I'm simply going to draw in just simply the A to B. And, and I have, don't have exact exact, but then we're going to move that over. So, yeah, so this has a or could have a. No, this does. This is going to generate on a monthly time frame a sell the D point pattern. I don't. It doesn't need to be a a uh, Japanese candlestick bearish reversal candle. It's going to be a key reversal bar. This month exceeded this last month's high, last month's low, and it's going to close. Looks like it'll close at least one tick, uh, one penny in the opposite direction of that trend. So that would be a key reversal bar. Now the problem with that is that price held that green oscillator and change line. You know we say here if you get a top and you get back to support, support holds. What happens? It goes to neutral. So Pale Allo Networks, neutral on the monthly, maybe a false breakdown, won't know till Friday on the weekly time frame chart, above profile resistance on the daily, we still got to go with that 294 level. So 294 is one possibility. If we look at a 30-minute time frame chart, which has a Rogeman indicator top, perhaps the reason why we're seeing a pullback out here, um, if you're really aggressive, and I do mean really aggressive. What's the one thing that everybody sees on this 30-minute time frame chart for Palo Alto Networks? What's everybody see with regard to the profiles? What's everybody see with regard to the profiles, these 30-minute profiles? Have we seen a close below the bottom of a 30-minute profile since coming off that Wave 7 Rogeman to Indicator bottom pattern? And the answer to that question is no. So with that being the answer... Then what we could also throw out to you, Marvin, is 30304 could be an entry point into X, I'm sorry, into Palo Alto Networks. And what you would do is if you saw a price close below that for two consecutive bars, you'd say, guess what? We're wrong on that one, at least with regard to the profile tools out there. So I hope that helps you out, Marvin. And uh, thanks so much for the request. The next request coming in from, I don't have the name on this, but it's with regard to XPEV. Now, we take a look at XPEV. This generated by the D-point pattern. I believe we looked at that last week, the week before. That confirmed on February the 6th out there. This has tons of gaps. It has tons of gaps. We can't use them because some of those or most of those are currency um, uh, issues out there. So that's not going to help us. On the uh, weekly time frame, I believe, as we mentioned, this has a TD9 count bottom pattern. So you've got a bottom on the daily and you're trading above profile. You've got a bottom on the weekly and you're trading above the center of its bullish structured profile. And if we can get a close above 
Well, that's center line. And that center line in the weekly time frame is 9.23. We should see a run towards a 10.66 level. That would be especially uh, helpful. It would be especially helpful if uh, at the close of this uh, month, the next few days, you see a close above 9.12. If you're at 9.34 right now, why 9.12? 9.12 is the bottom of that monthly profile. You get back inside that, that would be a bullish outcome. So you're, you're bullish on the daily, you're bullish on the weekly, and you potentially could be, yeah, you actually, you're bullish on the monthly too. Why? It's got a TD9 count bottom. And so price can get back inside that profile. It says last month's close below it was a false breakdown. That's what I see when I take a look at X. P-E-V out there. And I believe Stevie has made it through all of the requests. Is that possible? Let me take a quick peek, see if there's anything else that snuck in here. I don't think so. Ah, you got to let... Oh, wait a minute here. Doing great. XPI, confident. Yeah, okay, great. Okay, uh, EWY, Jimmy wants to take a look at. So let's get the EWY and uh, let that populate. Happy to do that, uh, Jimmy. Thanks for the request. You've also got EPHE. Uh, so EWY is the South Korea ETF, which is testing its bullish structured profile support area. So if you're looking to get into this, Jimmy, it's got a wave seven top from a couple of days ago. It's testing a support area. I don't see other closes below the bottom of the daily profile. So I'd say if you're looking to get into Korea, 63.48 and uh, 63.87 is the buy zone, and you're inside that right now. We'll finish this off when we get back from this break. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back 
folks, Dow's off 178, S&P's down 2, NASDAQ 100 up 18, Russell's up 27, Semi's up 21. Um, you had gold up four bucks, silver's uh, now up one penny, lights recruiters off a buck. We're taking a look at EWY. This is the South Korean ETF out there. We've established that it may have identified a, a buy point right about now. It has not closed below the bottom of a daily profile. We're trading with inside its buy zone on that daily time frame. The weekly is uh, bullish right now. Now, it's bullish because price above profile, price above a green oscillator and change line. But we are trading below last week's low. So I got to say for this week, it's actually more bearish. And that suggests to me that price might want to go target 62.92. So the real buy point really might be the 63.48 level. And if that area fails, well, then there's something that has changed with regard to the daily time frame for EWY. And on a monthly basis, it's a consolidation with inside profile levels. Let's look at that uh, next request that you have out here as well. Let's get that in. And that's going to be ticker symbol EPHE. Now we take a look at this chart, EPHE or set of charts out here. This is trading with inside his profile after confirming a roads momentum indicator top yesterday. This had a gap to the downside, had a gap to the downside today out here, but we're back inside the profiles. I'd have to say that the next area of support for it is 2730 or 2707. If price were to close below 2707 for two consecutive sessions, we'd be looking at 2636. On a weekly basis, EPHE looks very good. This is the Philippines ETF out there. Why is it very good? Two weeks ago, three weeks ago, the A to the TD9 count. Uh, top out there, it looks like an A to B equals C to the upside. We're trading above its monthly time frame out here. So this is a go, EPHE, if you're looking to invest into the Philippines. But I'd wait right now for some other type of support to be hit, 2707, 2730. Or what I would look for is some type of bottoming pattern on a short-term time frame chart, such as a 30-minute, and we don't have that right now. But you can watch the area of 20, nah, we don't have that. I'd wait for a bottoming pattern out there. So, folks, thanks for all the requests. Always enjoyable to go through all of those. And uh, stay tuned for all the great programming. Have a terrific Tuesday, if you will. And I'll see you back here on wonderful Wednesday. Take care, folks.